In today's video, I'm going to be discussing three camera settings wildlife photographers should always use. Now, these are settings that uh, I use on my camera as well, and I very, very rarely change. They apply to almost every wildlife photography scenario perfectly, and if you're not using these settings already on your camera, I definitely recommend that you set these up and test them out because I think that you'll be very pleased with the results that you get. So the first camera setting that I think wildlife photographers should always use is a wide open aperture. This is for a couple of different reasons. For one, it creates more foreground and background blur. And this is very important for wildlife photography because we're trying to keep the focus on the animal to make sure that the animal stands out and uh, has a powerful presence in the image. And um, when you use a wide open aperture, you blur out the foreground and the background more and keep the focus primarily on the animal. Because the animal is the only thing that's in focus in the image, the viewer's eye goes straight to it, which is obviously exactly what you want in wildlife photography. Now, another reason to use a wide open aperture is because it lets in more light. And this is crucial when photographing wildlife because we're often shooting fast moving animals in low light conditions, which requires us to shoot at a fast shutter speed and a high ISO. And so we want to allow as much light as we possibly can to get into the lens through a wide open aperture. Um, the more light that you can let in through aperture, then the lower you can bring your ISO, the higher you can raise your shutter speed and have sharper, cleaner images. Now, one thing that using a wide open aperture also does, especially if you're using like a big prime lens, like a 600 F4, 500 F4, is that it throws parts of the animal out of focus. If you have the focus point on the eye, then it's gonna focus on that. And then maybe the back half of the animal is gonna be out of focus. And some people will argue that you need to stop down to ensure that the entire animal is in focus in the frame. Um, but personally, I disagree with this. Um, you know, I found that as long as the animal's eyes in focus subconsciously the viewer is going to perceive that the entire animal is in focus they're not even really going to notice that the back half of the animal and the back legs are out of focus if the eye is perfectly in focus the rest of the animal can fall off and fall out of focus and to showcase this i've got a sample photo here um, that i took of a black bear in great smoky mountains um, and when you look at this photo from the outset, you look at it and say, you know, this is an in-focus bear. But when you zoom in and you take a look closer at it, you can see that I've got nice sharp focus up here where it matters on the face. But when you zoom in on the back of the body, this fur back here is totally out of focus really blurry, not in focus at all in the frame. Even though when you zoom out and you look at it like this, um, you perceive it as the bear being in focus in this image. It actually isn't totally in focus, um, but because the face is in focus and focus is locked on that eye, subconsciously, um, your mind tells you that this animal is in focus in the frame. Um, so that is really why I argue against the uh, idea that you know you need to stop down to make sure that the entire animal is in focus. And you'll find with most wildlife photographers out there, the professionals all shoot with a wide open aperture because they realize that in reality, to create a good wildlife life image the animal doesn't have to be entirely in focus so the point is almost all the time when you're taking wildlife photos you should be shooting with a wide open aperture um, the one exception that I would have to this is when you're shooting wildlife and landscape images where you're kind of trying to balance both the landscape that the wildlife lives in and the wildlife as, you know, both important components of the frame. In those cases, you'll often want to stop down to, you know, maybe F8, F9 to make sure that you're getting both the landscape and the wildlife in focus in the image because it's also an important part of the story for that image. So I would say that would be the one exception to this rule, um, but, you know, 99% of the time you're going to be shooting with a wide open aperture and trying to put primary focus right there on the animal. Eye. Let me interject here to briefly remind you all that I'm going to be giving away a free trip to Yellowstone National Park to photograph wildlife in the fall of 2022. Going to be announcing some more details on this soon, but all you have to do to be able to enter is to be a subscriber to the channel. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get back to the video. So that is the first camera setting that I think wildlife photographers should always be using. And uh, the second one is continuous drive modes. Now these are the drive modes on your camera that allow you to shoot in continuous bursts of images by just holding down on the shutter release button. For example, with the camera that I use for wildlife photography, the Canon R5, it's a phenomenal wildlife camera, did a whole review on that pretty recently. Um, but with this camera, you're able to shoot in bursts of 12 frames a second and 20 frames a second. And so by setting your camera up to shoot in one of these high speed continuous shooting modes, you're ensuring that you're able to capture all of the action as it happens when photographing wildlife just by holding down on the shutter, which is vitally important in wildlife photography because we're always trying to capture these perfect fleeting moments in which the wildlife is just in that perfect right position in the photo for the image that you want. And it's very difficult to do this if you're not using a continuous drive mode and shooting a burst of images. And to showcase this, I have another set of sample photos here. Um, these are of mountain goats that I took in Yellowstone this summer. You can see here that basically I was holding down on my shutter and I was trying to capture a moment where uh, the baby goat's head right here was not you know intersecting with the moms like right here you can see the ear is kind of touching there i wanted to capture a moment where they weren't touching this is obviously a difficult and fleeting moment to capture because the goats are constantly moving 
Um, so what I had to do was hold down on that shutter and shoot in one of these burst modes to capture 12 frames a second and ensure that I was capturing that exact moment where their heads were lined up in the perfect position. And so you can see here, as I scroll through these images, this was the first one, it didn't work out. As I held down on the shutter though, he moved his head down into this position and this looks a lot better, but the eye still isn't perfect there. It's a little bit closed and uh, just isn't exactly the look I wanted. But then when you go to this next frame, you can see that his eyes opened up a little bit. Um, he's widened it. He looks a little more alert. The ears are perked up a little more. And um, this was capturing the moment that I wanted because I got the baby's head perfectly in the right position with that right, you know, facial gesture here where his eye isn't, you know, like kind of closed like in this image. And also their bodies aren't intersecting at all here, which created that blue outline around the goat that helps him stand out and also helps the mom stand out and shows that they're two separate animals. So I was able to capture that moment perfectly, but then you can see if I go to this next photo, the baby goat has scooted a bit closer here and uh, this hair is kind of overlapping with his head. Plus the mom now has her tongue sticking out a little bit, which isn't ideal for this image. So just between those few frames there, you can see the image went through drastic changes um, that ended up creating only one frame in which I actually got the image that I wanted. Because the goats were moving so quickly and all these parts had to align to get that perfect image, there was only one frame out of that sequence that I got the image that I was really looking for. And this is why it's so important to use the continuous drive mode. By not using a continuous drive mode and by just taking one photo per shutter press, it'd be nearly impossible to time it perfectly to capture those fleeting moments that you're looking for and you're making wildlife photography so much more difficult than it has to be. If you switch over to a continuous drive mode and you spray and capture all of the action as it is happening, you're ensuring that you capture that fleeting moment that you're looking for every single time. Now the third and final camera setting that wildlife photographers should always use is continuous autofocus modes. The reason for this is because when you're photographing wildlife and the wildlife is moving across the frame and you're tracking this wildlife, you need to have your camera set up in continuous autofocus to maintain focus the entire time that that animal is moving through the frame. If you're using one shot autofocus instead, then after acquiring initial focus, you're gonna lose focus as the animal moves through the frame, which forces you to let your finger off of the shutter release button, repress it down to refocus to get the required focus for each shot, which much like using a single shot drive mode is gonna make it very difficult for you to capture that perfect moment where the wildlife is in the perfect position in the viewfinder. Just switch it over to a continuous drive mode and as you're tracking a moving animal, you'll be able to constantly have perfect focus on that animal. So those are the three camera settings that wildlife photographers should always use. Before I close this out, I wanna remind you guys to subscribe for that 1000 subscriber Yellowstone trip giveaway. And uh, I also wanna remind you guys to drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Drop a like as well. That helps the channel out a lot if you wouldn't mind. Um, if you haven't already, check out my Facebook and my Instagram, both of which will be linked down below. I post all of my photos over there. And with that guys, I think that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one.